So we have this word problem. Um, the sum of three numbers is six. Okay. The third number the third number is the sum of the first and second numbers. The first number is one more than the third number. Find the numbers. Weird. Okay, so let's go through this methodically. First step, we need to identify our variables. So we're going to write let, let x equal. Now, you guys have this in front of you, but you don't need to be copying this down right now. You just need to be paying attention. So thank you. Okay, so let x equal the first number. So we're just going to say the first number is x. Let y equal the second number. And let z equal the third number. Now, you can use any variables you wanted. I chose x, y, and z just because I'm comfortable with those three. All right. The second, we need to write a system of equations. So we've given, given all this information. The sum of three numbers is six. Can somebody write an equation for me? What would that look like? Yeah, Josh? So you're saying three times x is going to give me six. But this is the sum of the three numbers. What would you do? x plus y plus z equals 6. Perfect. OK, so we're given one equation. If we have three variables, we need three equations. So we got our first one. The second one's a little trickier. It says the third number, which is what? x, y, or z? z. So the third number, z, is the sum. That I know that means plus. Is is an equal sign. So z is going to equal the sum of the first and second numbers. What are my first and second numbers? x and y. So that just is saying I'm going to add those two up. So z is going to equal the sum of x and y. z equals x plus y. Uh-oh, so it was kind of weird. We need to move that x and y back over to the other side of the equation so we can get it all on the same side. But we'll deal with that in a second. What's the last one? The first number, what variable is that? Adrian, what do you think? The first number is x, good. So x is, there's my equal sign, one more than the third number. What do you think? What would I do, Tomas? One more than the third. Z plus one, very good. So Z plus one. Whoa. Now, this is our system of equations. We have three equations, but let's get all the X's, Y's, and Z's on one side. So here we already have our Z. It's lined up. I want to subtract X from both sides, and this cancels out, becomes zero, right? What else do I need to do? Yeah, definitely. So let's take y away, subtract y, and this is a positive z, so really there should be a plus z there. Okay, and that becomes zero. So what's left on this side? Just a zero. Good. So I might want to erase that. Oh, there we go. A little delayed there. Equals zero. How about this one? I want everyone to try that. I'm going to hit pause real quick. You guys try it, and then when you hit play, it'll tell you what the last one should be. So try it on your own. Okay, so you should have gotten this. You, notice we put a zero in front of the y to hold its place. Now that we've got this, we can set up our matrix equation. So we go with our coefficients. We need to make sure first all our x's are lined up, all our y's are lined up, and all our z's are lined up. Question? Okay, so we've got 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 0, negative 1. This is our first 3 by 3 matrix. We've got our x, y, z, our variable matrix. And we've got our solution matrix. Is that a 6? Yeah, 6, 0, 1. All right. Now, as we talked about on Friday, if you weren't here Friday, this might be a little confusing. But we identified these as our matrix A, x, and B. In order to get rid of our matrix A, what do I have to do to both sides of the equation to get rid of matrix A? We can't divide matrices. We're Instead of dividing, we're going to multiply by the what? What's that called? The inverse. We're going to get the identity, but we're going to multiply by the inverse, A inverse, on both sides. So we didn't learn how to do this by hand. We're going to do it on the calculator. So we plug in our A matrix, plug in our B matrix, and then using the calculator to solve, we end up with 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. How do I know that I get that on the left-hand side? How do I know? So I know that A inverse times A gives me that. We just know that? 
All right, we could check it too. We could check A inverse times A. Make sure, yes, it gives us the identity matrix. And we still have X, Y, Z. And our solution, in order to find the solution, we're plugging in our calculator A inverse times B. And we will get our answer. I'm going to hit pause. Well, actually, I can show you. Okay, so we grab our calculator out. All right, I want everyone to actually get out your calculators and do this with me. Omer, open up your calculator. Let's do this. All right, in order to do this on your calculator, you need to get to the matrix screen. And right here, it's the secondary screen. So I go uh, second matrix. And I want to go and edit my matrix. So I click left. Um, and I want to edit that matrix. It's a three by three. I already have that set up. So it's a three by three. And I enter my data. So I type in one, enter. And it moves to the right. So one, enter, one, enter. Uh, one, enter. Negative one, enter. Negative one, enter. One, enter. Okay, once you've got that matrix, it's very important that you quit out of that. If I go and sit, go try to enter my second matrix, it'll try and insert that second matrix in this spot. And I don't want another matrix within a matrix. So you got to quit out of there. Okay, so we're going to go second quit to get out of that screen. We're going to go back into the matrix screen. We're going to edit the three by one. So now we want to edit the second one. I had one student who was editing A and turning it into B, and then they didn't have A anymore. So you need your A, you need your B. So go ahead and edit. It's a three by one, and our numbers are six, zero, and one. The order really, really matters. So make sure you have it in the right order. Six. Zero, one. All right, so we quit out of there. So we know that A inverse times A gives us identity, but let's just double check. So let's go second matrix A inverse times second matrix A. So A inverse times A on the left-hand side gives us, aha, the identity matrix, yay. And then on the other side, we're going to go second matrix one inverse, which is this key right here, and then second matrix 2, which is my B matrix. So A inverse times B, and I'll get my solution, 4, negative 1, and 3. Question? Um, that is not a question I can answer right this second. All right, so we need to, as a last step, we need to interpret what our answer means. So my X represents something. The problems you guys are going to work on today in class, X might represent the number of chickens or the number of pigs. Or it might represent uh, the number of $1 bills, the number of $5 bills, the number of $10 bills, the number of coins, certain different things. Okay, but this just represents three different numbers. We know that the first number is 4, the second number is negative 1, and the third number is 3. So the first number is 4, the second number is negative 1, and the third number is 3. All right, so you want to interpret your answer. Hopefully that was helpful. If you haven't been in class, okay. Thanks for watching.